<sighs> I'm not lollygagging. I just need to do the intro. Welcome back to Mighty Number no. Nine. Don't fucking tell me what you do to f you fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Easy there, killer. We still have uh, See, okay, five more right. Mighty Numbers. Uh, Jump in the gun here. All right, sorry. Right, right, right. Just uh, wait till we get to the the real annoying Mighty Number. And I would say this is probably the second worst. Haven't found one I like yet. Yep, this is Dynatron. But uh, something I wanted to show off here real quick. Uh, they actually have uh, advice and explanations for the different Mighty Numbers based on who you've beaten. And this shows that I'm not going in weakness order. Because if you had Cryosphere, there's another Mighty Number, which we'll be doing next. That's uh, actually weak to Cryosphere. But I wanted to get this one out of the way because it's obnoxious. Oh, an obnoxious level. I haven't found one of those yet, either. Well, it's more an obnoxious boss, oh, and God. <laughs> obnoxious dialogue, and and obnoxious level design. This level blows. Uh, it just gets dark? That's it? Uh, no, no, there's there's a lot more that's wrong with this level. But, uh, yeah, that's that's one of the smaller gimmicks, is that the power keeps flickering, keeps going in and out, so, yeah, that's that's kind of annoying, but it's not a deal-breaker. Well, apparently, for no fucking reason, it just it just seems to be going off for a few seconds just to say, haha, now it's dark. I mean, there's no gameplay aspect to it. Donkey Kong Country did this better! Well, yeah, there is an explanation. Mighty Number no. 3 Dynatron is messing with the power plant. That's the reason it's going dark and coming back. So, story-wise, there is a reason. Doesn't make this level any more fun, especially when we get to the part that took me ages to figure out. I actually got a game over my first time because I couldn't figure out what the game wanted me to do. But, uh, uh oh yeah, and uh, this is kind of a trap. You kind of have to do the old Mega Man trick where you have to go to the very edge of the platform and then jump or else you're going in the pit oh, and dying. Oh, for fuck's sake. And that was an extra life. That's what makes it hilarious. So they want you to well go down there and know how to do the Mega Man trick in order... Or otherwise, you just waste the life you got. So uh, we're going back to the beginning. Oh my! That that makes me upset. <laughs> you could have fixed this whole goddamn thing and saved so much. And even with this death, you're still going to be beating the credits with record time. <laughs> but uh, just yeah. one switch to make one platform appear would have fixed the whole damn thing. But no, we, we need to make it difficult. You know, the, the old platformer days where, you know, you had to do some somewhat BS jumps like that in order to get some good results. Like, I, I remember, uh, I think it was actually Mega Man 2 where they had a BS jump like that. Well, in Mega Man... Well, never mind. <laughs> no, 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 I want to hear, uh, hear your discussion on this. Well, I was going to say that most of those things were optional and... Uh... Well, they're optional here, too, but they're also easier to get, because the controls didn't suck. Uh... This, th this looks like it's a nightmare to control. Actually, it's pretty solid. That's the one thing I'll give Mighty Number no. 9, it actually controls. In terms of ledge detection, I mean. Oh, well, yeah, that's not good. And there are a couple points that, uh, that made me really mad because the, uh, the input did not work 100% of the time. Oh, and here's another reason I really hate this level. Um... Sonda's interjections don't help, but these little robots... They're just small enough to go uh, underneath your blaster, and you need to bait uh, them into jumping into it by shooting at them. The thing is, if you don't shoot, they come directly at you. And also, these shield robots can go straight to hell. Yeah, these, uh... This introduces a lot of robots that are not fun to fight, in the slightest. Uh, and also you have this for some reason, which I can only explain as a loading screen. Because this is all. There's no enemies in this long hallway. It's just showing off how many robots they can put on screen. And even then, there's still a little chug in the system. What? Yeah, it, it's just a long hallway. Nothing happens. That, Why? That, that was that entire segment. That's. I have no idea why that's there. That's why I think it's honestly a loading screen. As far as I know, I don't think any Mega Man game ever did that. I mean, probably for a little bit of stylistic flair, maybe in a Wily Castle right before the final, final boss, but never in the middle but, of a regular stage. And never that long, and never, like, nothing, you know? Mm -hmm. That was nothing! I mean, oh, look, there's enemies on the screen, and we kind of figured that out already, but... 
Could so, you at least add some gameplay to it? Hey, uh, right here is the point where uh, I start to extremely hate this stage when they introduce giant instant-death saw blades. There aren't too many in this stage, but what they have you do to teach you a brand new mechanic that you may or may not have known existed is actually right here in this little segment. You see all these saw blades and you're going, okay, I, I gotta go near those, right? Sure. But uh, what they're going to teach you here soon is the art of different angle dashes. The cell dash that you have there, that you're always seeing me doing. Yeah, you can do oh, that. Oh, no. You can, uh, you can do that at different uh, perspectives. Right here, they want you to do a downward one where you have to actually press down. Yeah, they want you to do a crouch dash. They don't tell you how to do it. You have to look up and try to figure out yourself how to do it, which oh, in, in some aspect no. I appreciate. But uh, it took me forever to figure out that you need to hold down while pushing the dash button, and that makes you go lower to the ground. What the fuck? Nice loading what screen there. What the fuck? It's mean. It's a very what? mean thing to put in the middle of a level where you can, you can actually spend all your lives trying to figure this out. And by the way, I went through that guy without the cell activating. This is a uh, this is a not very well made level if I haven't if I haven't mentioned it. Hey, I'm I'm gonna take one more page from Mega Man's book and say when you're introducing a new control aspect, it's mm. good to do it in a fashion that doesn't kill the player instantly and make them go all the way back to the beginning. Like, remember when the disappearing blocks first appeared in Mega Man? The first like the first section. There was like a floor, so if you fell, you could just get back up and try again until you figured it out. Mm -hmm. And then once you clear that, they take the floor away and say, all right, now you're ready. Yeah, I honestly wish there was one room, just one room devoted to the smaller platform where you learn the crouch dash, and then they brought you to this room. That would have made this entire thing, like, solved and done with, there you go, you did a good. But they throw you to the dogs with this new mechanic that you may or may not have known existed yet, and then it just gives you that little flavor text saying, Oh yeah, you need to use a crouch dash. How do you do it? Fuck you. Oh, oh. and there's what? very little room for error, as you've been How able to see. How the fuck did you... What? Mm -hmm. It's not nice, it's not nice. That's horrible. It's mean-spirited, I'll give it that. Like, I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy, and yet here's my best friend doing it, and... <laughs> I'm t I, I feel a, I feel assaulted. You feel assaulted? Personally, like, emotionally <laughs> oh, assaulted, because... Okay. I mean, you're the one who has to file the charge for assault in the first place. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I, th there's gonna be a day in court where Mighty Number no. 9 tries to plead the case. Oh, look, Mighty Number no. 3 showed up in the dialogue. She's fun. Her gimmick what? is, because she has to deal with electricity, a lot of her sentences end with Z's. A lot of her words, I should say, end with Z's. Because electricity. It's shocking, I know. Oh, hey, we're there. Time to fight Mighty Number no. 3. Oh, I don't even have any puns for this. It's electric. So, I, won't, I won't offer any resistance. There you go. I will just sit here and meditate. Om. Om. You'd be a great conductor for yoga. Uh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I had to try to get one. Because uh, I'm gonna need some meditation because this fight blows! Blows. Yeah. It was tons of Z's! Yeah, it wasn't funny when fucking, uh, the Pokédex did in Pokémon Sun and Moon. It's not funny now! Oh, God, Rotom Dex. All right, so with Dynatron... That's what it was. I, I thought it would be a lot easier to use Cryosphere's power because Cryosphere's power is actually really awesome where yeah. you cover the enemy in ice and they constantly get hurt as they have that ice on them. So here's Dynatron's special attack where any of those little power charges she has on the ground becomes a place where she can hit you. Did it look like that it was completely locked on to you as well? There was one on me. She can actually oh, okay. stick you with those, and you have to, like, wiggle the control stick, press A a bunch to get it off you, and I didn't realize I had one on me. So, yeah, that was that was my bad. I completely missed that she stuck me with one. Well, I'm thinking Beck is made of metal, so I figure that he's just fucking doomed here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th this, this should be an unwinnable fight, to, <laughs> to be extremely honest. 
Like, basically, I just have to walk in the room, zap, dead. <laughs> it fries your circuits, overloads your servers. Beck, what happened? Professor, you didn't give me a coating of electric proof. You know, come to think about it, shouldn't Magnet Man be the most dangerous thing in this world? Seriously! If, if they were to go back to, like, the different men, robot masters, I guess, Magnet Man should win every single fight. Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, and like, like, so easily, too. It's like, alright, Magnet Man, time for you to- uh, Yeah, seriously. He, all he has to do is, like, hold out his hand, put it to the ground, and all of a sudden, Mega Man's face down in the dirt. Not only that, but, you know, Rock's dead, Roll's dead, Proto Man's dead, all the other Robot Masters are dead, and you know what, even Magnum Man's dead. Yeah, he, he would probably take himself out, unless there's a way to do, like, like, reverse magnetism? I don't know. Maybe he has, like, two minus magnets. That's how you get a spin-off out of Mega Man and 30 Second Hero. Oh, that'll work. He you gotta take 30 seconds, because in 30 seconds, he's just gonna realize that, hey, Mega Man isn't really a good series after all, and then he puts his hand on the ground and ends everybody. <laughs> it's like, no, we need a Mega Man 11! Oh, crap. Uh, oh, no. Uh, so, uh, uh, second uh, phase uh, of this fight is where it gets kind of annoying. She starts off the fight, the second half of the fight, with a shield. Oops. Oh, lord. And, uh, the spikes all of a sudden become different conductors of electricity, to where, as soon as she does that electric attack... The ones that were glowing send a shockwave all around the room. So all of a sudden, your space for dodging becomes a lot smaller. I want to beat my head into the ground with this fucking dialogue. <laughs> and this gameplay, mind. And, oh, here, the game feels sorry for you. Yeah, it's yeah. like, what? You're, you're getting your ass kicked, ain't you? After two lives, a helper buddy robot comes in and gives you some power-ups. That's not beat, really, it's not beat. Don't call him beat, it's not beat. See, so, he's not even a bird. So I will say the main thing you want to do with this fight is basically bait her to where all the different pins go into one side of the room. That way you can just go to the safe side and hope she doesn't go to the side you need. And uh, then you'll be good. Uh, oh yeah, and then there's this. Up. And there's this. Shut up. Uh oh Yeah, you need to take out all those different force fields, otherwise you can't hit her. And uh, the ice actually does work wonders here, because you can deal damage to all these different uh, protectors, and eventually they'll just break on their own. So at that point, it just becomes a uh, uh, war of attrition, I guess. Oh, this blows. And uh, there's no safe spot for me, because there's points all over the place. Well, that's just great. I'm so glad that this game is so balanced and fair. Oh, wait, that's a challenge, right? When the game just, uh, takes away all your pieces and says, all right, now I win, you lose a turn. Honestly, if I came in here with Dynatron's power, this this fight would have been over immediately. I uh, and, uh, actually, because I already know for a fact I'm not winning this fight based on the placement here, and no. boom, there I go. So in the time it takes me to get back to this fight, because I indeed got a game over, which means I have to go through the entire level all over again, let me talk about another power that is not in the regular version of Mighty Number no. 9. There's this little, okay. like, rainbow beam kind of thing that only went to backers. If you weren't a backer of the game, you did not get the rainbow beam. And I can't remember what reward tier it was. I know... I, I don't think you got it if you just donated one dollar, but... It, uh, it didn't do much. Basically, the rainbow beam, you would just place one wherever you fired, and then it would just shoot a small rainbow beam that did little bits of damage. So, in a sense, it's kind of like Cryosphere's weapon, except you can place it wherever you want. You don't actually have to hit the target in order to deal damage. So, uh, thanks. Thanks, uh, for the notion, but in... It's, you know, in hindsight, it really didn't do much. It wasn't that helpful of a move. And uh, I really hate it when developers do that. It go goes over the haves and have-nots, where uh, I got this awesome rainbow beam, and you don't. Oh, shit! Ah! <laughs> Damn it! Oh, well, that's well, what I, I get. Say that, I was going to say that the, the rainbow beam was uh, better than nothing, but, uh, you know. 
Mm. By the way, that folly was because I kept going through that robot. That is the only robot I have found where you can just go straight through him when trying to do the cell dash. And you, it just doesn't hit. It does not register half the time. So this game is just programmed in really shittily, too. So it's just a lot of things going wrong. And I, that helper robot looks like the blue virus from Dr. Mario. A, a little bit. I can see it. And she's wearing a Charlie Brown dress. Ah! Oh. What the? <laughs> Maybe. What can, the? Can, we, can we just have Sonda's dialogue be wah, 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 wah? Can it all be that? <laughs> it pretty much is, too. Oh, ah, damn it. Hold it's on. like different. It's like different horns uh, being you know, like you know we got Beck <laughs> going wah, 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 and then you got Doctor Sonic going wah, 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 wah. <laughs> then it just becomes a Banjo Kazooie game. <laughs> but we're already getting ukulele. We're already getting our Banjo Kazooie inspired Kickstarter game. That is true. Be I can't wait for better. that. I honestly can't wait for that. Even though I can't stand Banjo Kazooie, ukulele is a game I can get behind. Even though it's pretty much the exact same game. <laughs> Yeah, because you hate collectathons, don't you? No, I love collectathons, and that's the problem. There's a bunch of bullshit in Banjo Kazooie. How bad did uh, Donkey Kong 64 hurt you? I actually 100%ed that game. You are an insane bastard! Oh, I love that game. I love getting 100% in that. It felt gratifying and not bullshit. I do too, but uh, having five different types of bananas for all the Kongs is. Uh, <laughs> Is hard. And that was back before the internet, too. So, uh -huh. <laughs> but before I had uh -huh. access to the internet, I should say. I tell you, having it on the... Oh, fuck off! Shit. That's Unavoidable! Sucks. There we go. Come on. Having it on the virtual console, though, really helps. Because if you fuck up a minigame, you can just... up oh, try again! Uh, I will say the one thing that killed me as a kid... Be, uh, there's nothing interesting happening, so I can talk about this. Is, uh... The old-fashioned Mario. My... I think I was like 10, close to 13 when I was trying to 100% Donkey Kong 64. The old-fashioned Donkey Kong arcade machine got me every time because I couldn't figure out in my young mind that I could die from fall damage. That easily, I should say. You know, I had the same problem because uh, the Donkey Kong I grew up with was Donkey Kong 94 for the Game Boy, which had flips and kicks and whatas and all that. And going back to the NES version, I just couldn't get past 75 meters. It was was that NES or arcade? Blast. I and well, they're kind of the same. Whatsoever. NES oh, slash okay. arcade. Right, 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 right. Okay. By the way, I should say Dynatron's weapon is the most useless out of oh. all the Mighty Number no. Powers. So not only do you have an, an obnoxious level with an obnoxious boss, you also have an absolutely useless weapon. I think I've only found like one use for it. And that's mainly just cleanup crew. That's a Pyrrhic victory if I ever seen one. Oh, we got plot. So think about this. There's a virus kind of thing going around, okay? Any any uh, robot that was powered on was infected. Beck and Call do not have virus because they weren't on. But, wait, Beck has been on for a while, so shouldn't he be infected with it? Maybe, but he's special because he has the cell powers. So what you're saying is that this is a gritty reboot of the Brave Little Toaster? <laughs> Don't destroy my childhood, please. 